uh, welcome to this session. Uh, so far, we had seen some basic concepts on testing and then we had looked at black box testing, various black box testing techniques and then we had looked at uh, some white box testing techniques. And we said that there are mainly two types of white box testing techniques, one is coverage based and the other is fault based. And we started looking at the coverage based testing techniques. In the coverage based testing techniques, we looked at statement coverage, branch or decision coverage, co various condition coverage techniques and then we had also looked at path testing. Today, we will uh, look at few more white box testing techniques. Uh, Let us get started, but before that we will just like to see how much you have understood and recollect about the previous uh, discussions we had. We will just pose you few questions. The first question is what do you understand by coverage based testing? What is coverage here? What is covered? So, to answer this question, you can check your own understanding. To answer this question, a coverage based testing essentially is test execution covers certain program elements or executes certain program elements and the program elements that we consider can be statements, can be conditions, can be component conditions can be paths and so on. Now, let us look at one more question. What are the different types of condition coverage? What are the different types of coverage testing that we have seen so far? And here I hope you remember the various types of coverage techniques. We have discussed statement coverage that was the weakest then we looked at branch and decision coverage, we looked at basic condition coverage, we looked at basic condition with decision coverage, we looked at multiple condition coverage, the MCDC coverage and the path coverage. Now, the next question is how is exactly the coverage based testing carried out? What does the tester have to do? does he have to develop a graph for the program control flow graph and then design the test cases. Okay. Uh, this uh, if you remember we had said that only for very very trivial programs we can develop the test inputs that will cause the coverage of the program elements. For a practical program we do not really design coverage based test suits. We give test inputs, random test inputs and then we have a tool which measures the coverage and we keep on giving inputs until a desired coverage metric is achieved. Maybe our metric is 100 percent statement coverage, 90 percent path coverage and so on. Now, the next question, what do you understand by fault based te testing? We had, uh, if you remember, we had said that there are basically two categories of white box testing techniques. One is coverage based technique, where we try to cover or execute certain program elements. Whereas, in the other type of white box testing, we introduce specific types of faults into the program and then check whether the test cases are able to detect them. If the test cases are not able to detect them, we strengthen the test cases by adding more test cases. So, uh, we have not really looked at any fault based testing technique till now. 
excepting for the basic concepts. Today, we will look at the mutation testing, which is a fault based testing. Now, the next question is give an example of a fault based testing technique. Okay, this I think all will be able to answer. We just said mutation testing in an example of fault based testing. Now, let us uh, recollect some important aspects of the white box coverage based testing techniques that we had discussed. We had said that the strongest white box testing possible is all path coverage and all path coverage as uh, you might remember is uh, covering all possible paths in a program, but then we had remarked that all path coverage is actually a very impractical criterion, because uh, in presence of loops there can be very very large number of paths millions or billions of paths may be there and it is practically impossible to achieve all path coverage in the presence of when the program has loops. And then we had looked at the weakest white box testing technique, which is the statement coverage. And then we had looked at the branch or decision coverage, which is a stronger technique than statement coverage. We had looked at the basic condition coverage, where every component condition or atomic condition is made to assume true and false values. We had looked at the branch and condition coverage or which is also called as condition decision coverage, which is uh, stronger than both condition coverage and the branch decision coverage. And we had looked at the MCDC coverage, which is stronger than the branch and condition coverage and we had looked at discussed the basis path coverage, which we simply called as path coverage and sometimes it is also called independent path coverage in the literature. And then we had looked at multiple condition coverage, which is stronger than MCDC coverage, but then we said that uh, multiple condition coverage can result in large number of test cases when the number of atomic conditions or component condition in a composite condition or a decision statement is large. Specifically, we said that if there are 10 component conditions, we will have 2 to the power 10 test cases required for multiple condition coverage. And if there are 20 or 30 atomic conditions in a conditional expressions, then we will have a huge number of test cases millions and even billions of test cases required to achieve multiple condition coverage. And therefore, the multiple condition coverage is not really considered a practical testing techniques and normally no one insists that a program should be tested to achieve multiple condition coverage, but what normally is practical, practically important coverage techniques are the MCTC coverage and the path coverage. So, normally when a program for commercial uses or uses by large number of users is written, the tester tries to test with the objective of meeting both MCTC coverage and path coverage and as can be seen in this figure that both these are complementary test cases sorry complementary testing. What we had made what do we mean by complementary testing we had uh, defined it earlier that achieving 
path coverage does not ensure that we have achieved MCDC coverage. And similarly, if our test suit achieves MCDC coverage does not mean that we have achieved path coverage. So, it is a good idea if you are testing a program which is going to be used by a large number of users as do most of the software industry, the test their program using two important techniques, the MCDC testing and the path testing. Now, let us look at one more important white box testing technique which is called as data flow testing. Here in data flow testing, the main idea is that we have test cases such that the definition and uses of variables are covered. So, the test cases are defined or we define paths through the program based on what are the locations of definition and use of specific variables. Let me just repeat that the location of definition and use of specific variables define paths through the program. This is unlike the path coverage which we had discussed where the paths were defined on the control flow graph. Here the paths are not defined on the flow graph, control flow graph, but here we looked at what how does the data flow or where, where are the data definitions and uses occur and based on that we define the path. Just to give an example, uh, let us look at this C program and here as we can see in statement 2 A is assigned 5 or we say that statement 2 defines variable A and then we have statement 3 which has a uses of variable C, statement 4 has uses of D, but if you look at statement 5 we have uses of variable A. So, definition of variable A occurs in statement 2 and the variable A is used in statement 5. Now, let us look at statement 6. In statement 6, we have both uses of variable A and also definition of variable A because A appears on the LHS in addition to appearing on the RHS. Similarly, on statement 8, we have again uses of variable A. So, here for every statement, we define uh, two sets. One set is called as def s. If the statement number is s, we define def s, which is the set of all variables x such that x contains a definition of x. And typically, a statement at most defines one variable. So, the definition set of a statement will typically be one variable, whereas the uses set of a statement s can be many variables. The statement may use many variables and it is possible that it can assign value or defines value of one variable. Now, let us look at this example a equal to b and here the statement number is 1. So, we write the def set of statement 1 is a and the uses set of statement 1 is the set b. Now, let us look at second example. 
Okay, so maybe I should uh, I, I could have written def two because I have numbered it as two. So def set of statement two is a. So it defines the variable a, and the user set of statement two is both a and b because a and b are both used. Now, we say that a variable x is live at a statement s 1, the variable is live if x is defined at a statement s and from between s and s 1 there is no further definition of x. So, a statement a variable x defined at a statement s is live at another statement s 1, if there is no intermediate definition of that variable. Now, let us see with respect to an example, if a variable is live or not. So, this is the definition of a and this is the uses of a and there is no intervening definition of a and therefore, the definition of the variable a is live at statement 5 and is also live at statement 6, but then it is not live the definition at 2 is not live at statement 8 because it has been redefined in statement 6, but the definition of a at 6 is live at statement 8. So, this we saw a from 2 the definition is live at statement 5. Now, based on what we discussed we can define a d u chain. A d u chain is a triplet consisting of the name of a variable, the statement at which it is defined and the statement at which it is live. So, x is in the def set of s, x is in the uses set of s 1 and there is no intervening definition of s sorry of x between s and s 1. This we call it as a d u chain and one of the simplest data flow testing is that all d u chains in the program must be covered. That means, that wherever there is a definition of a variable, the uses of that variable must be a test case must cover those two statements. So, this we said that there is a this is the simplest data flow testing, there are other data flow testing criteria more advanced criteria, but we are not going to discuss those we are just looking at the basic concepts of data flow testing and the simplest data flow testing technique which is the d u chain coverage. So, let us look at what will be the test cases required to achieve d u chain coverage. Now, let us look at this statement where we have uh, a block of statements b 1 which define a variable a and then there are some conditions which use other variables do not use a and uh, the block b 4 it uses variable a. Now, there are other variables as well and based on that we can compute the d u chains for the example that we uh, discussed a is a variable defined in block 1 and used in block 5 and this forms a d u chain. 
Now, assuming that x okay, the st statement is used in different blocks, we will have a large number of chains and but then we need only a few paths to cover these chains, because multiple chains can occur on different control flow paths. Now, let us look at another white box testing technique, which is the mutation testing and we had said that mutation testing is not a coverage testing, but it is a fault based testing technique, where we introduce a specific type of fault into the program and then check whether the test cases are effective against that type of fault. If not, the test case will be augmented with additional test cases to strengthen the test suit, so that the specific type of fault will be detected. Now, let us look at the basic idea here. In mutation testing, first we use certain coverage testing techniques and we have some test cases to achieve coverage of uh, some coverage technique. So, an initial test suit is designed using some white box coverage technique we discussed. Now, once the initial testing is complete, the initial testing may be MCTC testing uh, or may be path testing or may be both and once we have tested using this, we want to check if the test is really effective against certain type of bugs and we carry out mutation testing. The main idea behind mutation testing is we make small changes to the program and when we change a program that essentially means a bug. So, the original program written by the program programmer, we make small changes to that. Maybe we changed a arithmetic operator from plus to minus or maybe we changed the type of a variable. So, these are uh, some examples of small changes to a program and each small change to think of it is actually a bug, a type of bug. So, now, we run the test cases knowing that we have introduced a bug, we run the test cases again and check whether this bug is caught. That means, some test cases fail signaling that a bug has been introduced in the program. So, that is the main idea here. So, we insert fault into a program by constructing a mutated program a mutated program has a simple bug and now the test case is run and it may be um, quite straightforward to run the test cases if we have a record and play tool we just effortlessly run all test cases and check whether all test cases pass or some test cases have failed. So, the terminology that we discussed here, one is a mutated program. Mutated program is one where we deliberately introduced some minor fault and the type of change we apply is we call it as a mutant. Now, if we have this uh, mutated program and we run our test cases and then some test cases fail, then we know that our test cases are actually testing well, they have caught the bug we introduced and we say that the mutant is dead. That means, this type of bugs our test cases is able to detect and we might try new bugs to check whether the 
test cases are detecting those. But then if all test cases pass and we know that we had introduced a bug, then our test cases are not good enough. We need to augment our test cases, add additional test cases until the bug that we introduced gets caught. So, if the test cases pass for a mutated program, we say that the mutant is alive and that is the terminology used in mutation testing and then we design additional test cases, run further test cases until a test case fails flagging the bug that was introduced. So, one advantage of this mutation testing is that generation of mutated program making small changes and also running all the test cases both can be very easily automated. And therefore, even though it is possible to generate a large number of mutants or in other words even though we can have tens or hundreds of thousands of mutated programs, it is not a problem, we do not have to do it manually, we can generate all these mutated programs through a tool and also we can run all the test cases and check whether these are passing or failing and therefore, the mutation testing technique is amenable for automation. We will stop this session at this point and we will continue in the next session. Thank you.